I saw this car and I'm like, you know what? I need to get that guy on interview. So we're gonna talk about this mobile station that is, I guess you can talk to like the International Space Station pretty easily on that, right? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet? <laughs> I, have, okay. I, I have a blank piece of wood up here and eventually that'll have some M, M2 egg beaters on it. Oh, nice, then okay. Then satellite. you'll be able to do it, okay. All right. But so it. Yeah. Uh, do, take us uh, around if you don't mind. Just tell us what you got. Well, do you want to start with antennas or with radios? I, start with the radios since they're right there in the back. All right. So it's a little harder to track them because I'm looking at the back of the radios. Right, yeah. So um, uh, FT891. Okay. It's my HF rig. And then an ID5100, mm -hmm. a dual bander, digital D-Star. And before the, D before the 891 was there, I had the 857D. Sure. So I took the 857D out, retired it. Uh -huh. But I knew better than to sell it because it's worth more now than when I bought it. Yes, it is. 15 you're, years ago. You're correct on that. Yes. So I, oddly enough, when I got, I took an interest in contesting. Mm -hmm. Well, the cheapest way to get back to get into single sideband on UHF VHF is to use the radio I already have. Yeah, yeah. So that's I, true. <laughs> at that point, I reorganized this whole back end. Okay. So this is all very new. Uh, this installation. So yes. the radios have always been in here. I just had them in there differently. Sure. You used to have a big subwoofer in the middle and everything. But anyway, um, so now I've got the A5070 over here um, and then all the digital interface for it. Mm -hmm. I've got a key line splitter for it. Uh, two meter amp, a four meter, uh, excuse me, 70, 70 centimeter amp over here. Okay. And uh, the centerpiece there is a voltage regulator. So okay. it holds, no matter what the, what the feed input is, uh, it'll take as low as 10.5 volts and step it up to a voltage of my choosing. So I have it set at 14.2 volts. Gotcha. Really? Okay. So and that that keeps your that keeps your radios from performing on uh, if your battery gets low. Yes. Okay. But now okay. I have a lithium ion ba iron right. battery, uh -huh. and it, you know it's and always going to be right up there at sure, 13 yeah. volts. Okay. It's still stabilizing that. Yeah. Good. And so eventually I'm going to get a second one and put it here okay. for it to support these amplifiers. So the amplifiers gotcha. are not being, that, that will support 40 amps. Oh, so it won't do the amplifiers and the radio. Right. Correct. Okay. It'll do right. one amplifier, one radio, probably. Okay. But uh, I didn't I didn't wire it that yeah. way. Okay. All right. So uh, let's Good. see. That's, that's that. That's the back end. Well, since we talked about that, let's come yeah. over here to the feed lines. Okay. Well, you're not looking hard. Look at that. So okay. uh, power coming in from the front of the car, that main relay down there is connected to the battery. Okay. It energizes only when the engine is running. Okay. So when the engine is running, uh, and that's controlled by this APO3. So when the voltage gets up above 12.6 volts, mm -hmm. it turns on the relay and then it starts charging the lithium battery, which is behind here. Well, I'll show you that in a minute. Fancy ignition sense. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's actually designed or intended for turning off a battery when it gets low, but I'm using it the backwards way. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm making right. it turn right. on when the battery and okay. the alternator is on. Okay. Feed lines. Mm -hmm. um, these are for the uh, horizontals. So they default to these horizontal loops up here, and mm -hmm. I guess we'll talk about that in a second. And then when I flip a switch, you can't see it because it's black, but when I flip that switch, these coaxial relays energize and it sends everything to the beams instead. Oh, So my okay. plan is to use loops when I'm on the move and beams when I'm parked. Okay. And then I just flip okay. a switch when I want to switch and between Of course, you them. just point your car in whatever direction you want your beam pointed, I guess. I have a rotator. Do you really so have a rotator? Okay. So I don't have to. Okay, so we'll get to that too then. And then uh, feed through here. Let me show you the feed through because that's uh -huh. a lot of people like that. Oh, nice. Yeah, so this is my pass-through port. Okay. And so... Uh, uh, these are the beams, these are the loops. I don't have 222 yet, so that's what these are reserved for. Okay, okay. And so uh, I do run them separately, so they're, they're paired kind of weirdly, but when mm -hmm. I take the rotator off, I still will drive around with the loops up there on, oh, on the okay. weekends. Okay. So all of this is modular. I have it set up to where I can put on and off whatever I want to use. Yeah, okay. Depending on what my mission is. Okay, okay. And let me leave that closed because right. since we're here, we'll go ahead and go with the operating station. Okay. So my primary radios are right here. I mm -hmm. built this shroud out of uh, an index card box. And so that, that protects it from direct sunlight. Right. I used to have my 857 up in here and they're notorious for being sensitive to, oh, yeah. to heat. Yes. Uh, but my A57 display has been replaced with a better display, so hopefully it'll last longer. Yeah, okay. But I've got my 891 here on top and the ID5100 on the bottom, and okay. these are the radios. Well, especially the ID5100, use it every day. Uh, that's the that's my main VHF, UHF in my truck. It is. I love yeah. the touch yeah. screen on it. Right. And then uh, HF here uh, and six meters. Okay. And then the 
FT-857 I use only for two meter and 432 single sideband. Okay. And when I eventually get the, two, the 222 transverter, mm -hmm. it will go off of that. So that'll be only a contesting radio. Nice, okay. Or single sideband radio, because so, I do talk on single sideband nets on the weekends with it. There's a contest, 50, 50 megahertz and up contest, and mm -hmm. VHF, and, or even a, there's a 222 and up contest also. Yes, yeah. and of course okay. I've never participated in that one. Right, yeah, okay. Um, the desk with the computer, I only mm -hmm. put that in if I'm going to do FT8 usually. Okay. Uh, or if I'm just doing a non POTA HF thing and I mm -hmm. want to log directly into my computer. Okay. Otherwise, I use hammers on a tablet mm -hmm. and then import it to my yep. logs. That's that's how I do it on myself. And I've got my Heil headset over there on mm -hmm. the, sitting on a hook. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. So the antennas. Do you want to go from that side so yeah, we don't have yeah. the sun on our face? Yeah. Let's get yeah. Let's get the sun on the back side of us there. So. These tie downs are fun because the Overland crew uses these to keep branches off their windshield. Yeah, except so. they put them up here, right? right. So then yeah. it's a, yeah, it a little breaks bit farther. tree limbs. Right. Uh, what do they call them? Limb, limb move? I, I don't they know. They got a name. <laughs> I call them cables. I don't know what they so call them. So I, I put this on here first so that it's not really for stability, uh -huh. it's for retention. Okay. So if I hit something and break something, uh huh. I have all of these bolts that are on here, they're totally overkill for the application. There's no way they're gonna break. Yeah. But the bolts that are in this rack, they're only M4. Okay. Which seems small, but uh -huh. the tensile strength of an M4 bolt is 3,500 pounds. Uh -huh. So it seems unlikely that I would break one, but if I hit a tree limb that does the job, or mm -hmm. gosh, even a, a 15 pound turkey vulture. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I approach one of them and it flies straight up and instead of off to the side. I don't know what that'll do up there. Right. So that's I true. put this on for retention so I can at least get to the side of the road before anything gotcha. falls on anybody so, else. To it, um, before it falls off of your, your Then route. I discovered okay. these um, these sea suckers. Okay. And so now I have the tower guide. And again, this isn't necessarily for stability, although I'm sure it helps, it's mm -hmm. for retention. Right. In the hopefully unlikely event that I break something. Right. Okay. So uh, that's that's that. I've got them tensioned lightly, and each one holds. It's got 210 pounds of of suction force on each one. On each one. Okay. And so uh, okay. I I think it'll yeah, be effective. And there's front ones here. Yes. So front ones. There's one in each corner. Yep. So I've got. Okay. Yep, I've got four. Okay. Okay. So again, if if the worst should happen, uh -huh. hopefully it's enough to get me to the side of the road before right. it winds up in somebody else's car. Totally, okay. All right, so the antennas. Yeah. Uh, for the verticals, uh, ATAS 120A, mm -hmm. it's there because it's convenient. Uh, this little antenna, I switch over from time to time depending on what I feel like. Uh, this is 400 something megahertz, I forget what. It's kind of wide banded. Yeah. My idea today is to use it for my D-Star hotspot. So oh yeah, can sure. It around the park. Sure. Okay. I've got this uh, mystery 902 over there. I don't know who made it. Uh, <laughs> oddly enough, the fellow standing behind you gave it to me. He's uh, his mission in life is to get people on 900 megahertz. Ah. So okay. I have the antenna mounted, but I haven't put the radio in because I've okay. just been so busy doing everything else. Okay. Uh, we boost cellular we signal boost, booster. Yeah. I saw that we boost in your in your back seat there. All right. Okay. And then a regular old dual bander right there. Uh huh. Uh, this is also a vertical antenna, a Scorpion mobile those, HF those antenna. Those Scorpions are like, those in the high Qs are supposed to be like the best screwdriver mobile antennas you can get. I had I've run, told. this ATAS here is about 15 years old. I got mm -hmm. it back when I got the 857. Okay. And so it works. I mean, yeah. people talk about it, I mean, but yeah. I've talked South America and oh, Europe yeah. on it, so they work. Mm -hmm. But I figured, let me try a better antenna. Might as well try, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Do you find that the performance of the ATOS is, might might be sometimes better because it's over metal? Or do you, I uh, haven't done a back-to-back -back test of them okay. yet because okay. when I got the screwdriver, I took the uh, when I got the Scorpion, I took the A toss off. Oh, okay. And so the two have only been on the car simultaneously for a month. Oh, okay. And I don't have them switched to the same port, so I haven't been able to do a direct comparison. A direct yet. comparison. I I'd, will someday, though. Yeah, that'd be a that'd be a neat test, I think, to try to see how that is. Okay, so what are the uh, are these directional? The, uh, yes. the square, the square squalos so, or whatever you call them. I like to call these modules because I okay. made it to where it's all modular. And I can put on and take off whatever I want depending on my desires. Okay. So the first module to go up was the one on the driver's side. Uh -huh. It's got my horizontal loops on it. So six meters here in the back. Uh huh. Two meters and then 432 underneath it. It's this little tiny. Oh, I thing. see you it. You can barely see it. I see it. Yeah. Okay. So that's a 432 right there. And so halfway up that mast. Four I, four nuts and the whole thing just comes off. It weighs about 10 pounds. There's nothing to it. Oh wow. Okay. 
Okay. Then I built this one. So these three planks here, these are just decking boards. Mm -hmm. They're actually glued and screwed together. So it all, the whole thing comes off as one unit. Okay. That's where I built this micro tower, as I like to call it. <laughs> and uh, the micro tower, the rotator, this is a Yesu, what is it called? A G450 okay. ADC, I think it's his model. Okay. Just that alone, uh -huh. uh, 50 pounds. Oh. It's manageable, but not terribly fun. Uh -huh. With the boom and the antennas, the whole thing weighs about 75 pounds. Okay. Again, I can get it up there, but it's no fun. And right, so right. What I do is I mount it in pieces. Okay. I'll put, I'll put the, the tower up, um, get it all positioned and sorted, and then I've got, I've got these safety lines that I put on it, so then I can t tilt it down. Okay. And it rests on this empty plank to keep it off the paint. Okay. Then I slide the boom and the antennas in and then stand it up. That's okay. my method that seems to work so far. Okay. So then the antennas starting at the top, I've got six meters. It's a PAR electronics. Okay. Uh, it's a Moxon, but it's, it's specifically a stressed Moxon because it's, it's held together by tension. You can see how it's kind of bowed in. Yes. And that tension holds it together. Okay. And it breaks down nice and small pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, two little screws and the whole thing just comes apart and folds into a, uh, about this size, right? Okay. Okay. Below that, uh, directive systems and engineerings. Uh, these are called rover specials because the booms are eight feet long. Okay. Which means they're legal for road. If I have, if I happen to boom over while I'm driving down the road, uh -huh. the max width allowable on the road is eight feet. Yes. So these are legal. Okay. Okay. Still get me negative attention though, so I don't boom <laughs> while I drive. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's a two meter five element. Uh -huh. I think that's about 10 dBD of gain. Uh -huh. And then below that's a 432 15 element. That one is about 13 dBD. Okay. And all right, I think I'm out of antennas. That about covers that. <laughs> uh, I now have room for eventual expansion to the 222 band. Right. Have you ever done any 220 sideband? No, not at all. Okay. I, I'm still, I'm very new to the sideband business. Okay. In fact, okay. I've, I've had that A57 for 15 years and uh -huh. I have never operated high band. Two, two, two meter sideband at all? Nothing, really. Yeah. Okay. So it's ironic that after I retire the radio, I then bring it out of retirement to do <laughs> VHF single yeah. sideband. Yeah, I hear that. Well, Scott, this is a really cool setup. I appreciate you sharing it with me today. There's one more thing that I didn't show you. All right. I mentioned it over there. All right, let's see it. The power. Oh, yes. In oh, there, yeah, your battery. Uh, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Okay. With a DC to DC charger, it has a proper battery charger in it, so it goes through all three phases of battery charging. Yep. And it, I'm going to say, limits the charge rate to 30 amps. Because mm. you know if you hook up a lithium battery to an alternator, it'll suck oh, that alternator until yes. it lights on fire. Right, right. That yeah. will not pull more than 30 amps no matter what I'm doing. So even okay. if I'm keyed down and pulling 100 amps from that battery, that will not pass more than 30. So it's completely isolated from gotcha. the car. Gotcha, okay. Is that a Victron? Yes, that one's okay. by Victron. Yeah. yeah, I think it's called the 1212-30 uh, something, 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 I don't remember. Something. But it's, okay. it's, it's there, it's a DC okay. to DC charger. Okay. And then I have the battery wrapped in a, an insulating wrap. Yep. And there is a uh, RV holding tank heater underneath it that heats it when the temperature falls below freezing. Really? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Nice. So low, uh, low temperature voltage or yeah. low temperature charging. It would have to be pretty cold for a long yeah. period before it gets too cold for right. me to charge. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cool, man. Hey, thank you. Thanks for uh, putting this on display. Yeah, you're welcome.